everybody, this is Pat and Heidi from Rain Country Homestead. God is good. All the all time. All the time. And today we're talking about... Health insurance. <laughs> what about health insurance? It's a ripoff. <laughs> the end. The end. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'm trying to save you guys time. <laughs> right. Anyway, that's a short story. But uh, if you guys are still here, you can hear the long story. And insurance, it's, it's a good thing. It's insurance. But uh, you're having to rely on them to make a decision whether or not they're going to approve a claim or not. You know, yep. you're guilty till proven innocent. <laughs> okay, I know this is just Mr. Rain's rant and view on insurance. Such a cynic. I don't like to rent either, but um, sometimes you have to. If you have to have insurance, although it's unconstitutional that you have to have it. Yep. <laughs> but that's a... They can't... Maybe that, this is the time to talk about that. Right. Well, <laughs> it's a crime. It, it's a crime for the government to force you to buy any product. Just saying. Right. And that is a crime. It's illegal. So, yeah. Anyway. Just like the prohibition. Well, well, right. So we'll we'll just keep it there because I could get on a long rant about all that kind of stuff. And this is just and about you don't you don't want Mrs. Rain's eyebrows to go up and her eyes to bug out and face to get you pull red out the soapbox because then I have to pay for it. <laughs> anyway, okay. Funny story on the side. When I used to teach dance and do dance shows, I always had this. I always have a soapbox. I've always had a soapbox that my dance students even That's made me short. a soapbox <laughs> and had me stand on it when I was uh, introducing the show one time. So it was kind of funny. It said soapbox on it. So <laughs> Anyway, so we're here to talk about some of the options that are out there. Um, there's three main options that I would consider for anyone uh, that I want to put out there for people to consider other than what is offered to you, especially by the government, because that's, from what I've seen, is probably the worst that's out there. And anyone who has it knows it's the most expensive. Uh, it, affordable care is not affordable. <laughs> and there's much more affordable ways to go about it. Well, the reason we're touching on this subject is we had a, we had a viewer that asked us about what we did for insurance. Is for, that, for health insurance. Yeah. We've had a couple people ask that question. Right, and so we kind of like to, yeah, it would be a good thing to talk about. So what we did for the for a while there was when Patrick was still working for the man, is that we had insurance through his job, and it was, it was decent insurance for the most part, but we really rarely ever used it. That's the thing, is, you know, he was getting a certain percentage taken out of his paycheck. I mean, it, there was... There was the, you know, some of it was funded by them and then we paid for the rest and it, we just, we're just healthy people. We don't, we're not on any kind of medications, which that most of you know, we've quit the, we quit the thyroid medication like seven years ago and so we're not on any of that and the only thing I see health insurance being good for, for people like us is you just never know when a catastrophe is going to happen, you know, you get in a, a wreck and you're all beat up or suddenly come down with cancer as we know that can happen to anyone no matter how healthy they are or how well they take care of themselves uh, you just never know and you know it's good to have some sort of insurance but since he has not been working you know he's been working from home you know we've been doing this together as we talked about in <laughs> as we talked about in our escaping the rat race video and I'll go ahead and link to that up here because I think it's I think it's one of our better videos personally because I, I think it's good about trying to get people to take charge of their own lives. But anyway, uh, we haven't had that insurance and thankfully we haven't needed it. But what we do have and we've had for a very long time is a health savings account. And what that is, it's an account that you pay into as much as you want. And uh, it sits there and earns interest for you. For you, it's it's a it's a type of savings account, like a CD or a you know it's an investment, and it sits there and earns interest for you. And it actually counts as insurance as far as the government's concerned. And it uh, 
as long as it's sitting there unused, it'll just keep earning. You know, it, it, it'll have days where it has losses, but it just, for over the long stretch, we've seen it just keep gaining. And so what happens if it, anything ever happened, any catastrophe, emergency where we needed to use it, we could cash it, you know, whatever we need. We just put in for, you know, we'd fill out the paperwork and put in there and show them the bill and then they take care of it. And then whatever's not needed still stays in the account building interest. So it is a much better deal as far as that goes because, you know, with your regular insurance payments, whatever it kind it is, your pre premiums, it doesn't matter what type of insurance is. You know, if you never used it for that policy period, you're out all that money. It's gone. You might as well just flush it down the toilet or put it in the burning pile. Right. It's, you know, it, it didn't work for you at all. You just paid into it. And if you never used it, you just, it was just wasted money. Where with a health savings account, it's, it's in there. It's, and it's set aside in a safe place where you can't touch it until you need it for a health related emergency. What would be better, <clears throat> what would be better than that? Um, and more, more of a flexible thing is if you had CDs, money markets, or other um, right. high yield investment pro, uh, portfolio that you can make a payment to that and save that money, let that money work for you, and the reward in the end, if you don't use it, you you have that extra money there right. to invest in other options. You don't, you're not just stuck to paying insurance and then after six months they 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 send you another bill for another six months um yeah i mean i'm gonna keep harping on the whole thing that insurance is a ripoff if you can if you can if you can start out your life with insurance with a high deductible you know then your insurance is going to be less but you take that deductible you invest that in a money market or a CD and you save that for in the event that you have to have, have to pay that insurance. But also what you can do on a, in, in that particular instance is keep putting money into that money market or CD or 401k or what, what have you, keep building that up. And then when your next insurance policy comes along, you raise your deductible rate. So let's say you have a $500 sitting in your savings account or in a coffee can in the backyard. Well, get an insurance with a $500 deductible. So when something happens, you have that money on hand and you can pay it. Then let's say you scrounge up another 500 bucks so you got a thousand dollars get your insurance raise your uh deductible up towards a thousand dollars so you're reducing your premium down every single time keep building that and leave it alone specifically mm -hmm. for your medical uh emergency medical or high high medical bills you know like you get cancer or or some sort of terminal disease or a major operation, you know, the pharmaceutical industry and the hospitals are just rubbing their hands together and everybody else yep. is out there waiting to wait. I probably just knocked her off her soapbox. But anyway, put me back on it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, if you gotta get the idea, you just keep saving. Yep. The more money you can put away is your money you know it's yep. not something that, like you're gonna pay like a five hundred dollars per month for all your insurance or whatever like that and you're never gonna realize that unless you get hurt you know right. my mentality here is just to save what you can be self-insured yep be self-insured and we're gonna talk more about that in a little bit one thing I want to go back to the health savings account is that uh, if you have that in tandem with a, some type of health insurance, then the health savings account will pay that deductible for you too. So the nice thing, let's say if you don't have any other insurance but a health savings account, the nice thing about that other than, uh, as opposed to having it just in a separate CD in your own bank, 
is that it, it does have a little bit higher yield as, than most of your CDs and it does count as insurance. That, that will say that you're covered. That's how we were able to not have to pay a fine this last year on our taxes is because we were still covered for the whole 12 months under that health savings account. And even though we never used it, it's, it, we were covered, it was there and that, that counted. So even though they're doing away with the penalties, at least for the time being starting this year, it's hard to say how long that's gonna continue. So having a way to cover yourself that way is really good uh, just to prevent you know, penalties. However, if any of you ended up having to pay the penalty because you couldn't afford health insurance, then uh, the penalty is so much cheaper than buying health insurance that you don't need. But also, uh, you know, for a lot of people, you you could have possibly got out of it because if you can't afford it, you just say, I can't afford it. And you should be able to get out of having to pay that penalty. So if you haven't finished your taxes this year yet, you know, you should be able to do that. If if you had couldn't afford health insurance, you should be able to write in there. I, we couldn't afford it. You know, we didn't make enough money. But uh, then the next thing I wanted to mention that we've looked into, but we're not we're not going to go with but we recommend it for people who are looking for a more affordable and what i think is a much better insurance policy than what for that i think will work for most people not everyone is to look into the the health share uh places out there there's a several different ones one of them is called liberty share and we looked into that and then another one is uh Samaritan which is a Christian based one well I think the other one's Christian based too the reason I didn't like the Samaritan one is that they won't accept you if you are not a regular attendee of a church and then you have to have a letter to give them from your church saying that you went to this church and we currently are without a church home now I do understand it because the whole idea is they want to make sure that the that you're you know, like with the Liberty Share, it's another thing is they, they want to review your records and stuff and make sure that you're someone that actually lives a healthy lifestyle. They're not going to want to take people in that are just, they're going to sit around and, you know, drink it up and smoke it up and, and eat bonbons and, you know, and donuts. High, high and, risk. <laughs> you know, it, you know, and you're lazy. You don't do anything. They're not going to accept you into the program. So you have to be a relatively... It doesn't mean you can't have a, a an or a pre-existing condition. They just want to know that you are living a healthy lifestyle. A lot of people have a pre-existing condition that are living a healthy lifestyle. So it's not that. So the difference with a health share type plan is that you're actually sharing the health costs amongst different people. So your money is still going out but you're actually helping, directly helping other people when they need it. And then when it's your turn and you need it, you put it out there and then people will pay their premiums basically directly to you to pay for your health care. And so it's, you know, it's a community based thing, which I think is, is excellent myself. It's not really, uh, in my opinion, quite as good as being able to have maybe a health savings account where you've got the money sitting in there building interest and, and, and constantly gaining as it's in there. I think that's the best way. And then the money is always there. It doesn't just disappear, you know, but at least with a health share, it's people helping each other. And it's, I would say, a little more reliable than a lot of the health insurances that are out there. And well, and here's a concept. Um, along those same lines, um, if you have responsible, healthy people in your family or your close fr friends group, I know this day and age it's tough to, to trust people, but what a concept it would be <laughs> if each person in a, in a small group or even a large group could compile their money put in a certain amount per year and build up that savings account and then everybody within that you know depending on how smaller you know how how small or large that savings account is right group bucket is why can't everybody within that group get insurance 
commensurate to how much they got saved. And so, so your deductible, let's say y'all got together and you had $10,000, you know, buy $10,000 deductible insurance for everybody. So the major medical, when it comes along, you know, everybody pays, you know, if everybody's honest and everybody yeah. uh, takes care of themselves and they only go to the hospital when they absolutely have to, um, why not get a, a group together to save that money for a large deductible insurance for everybody? Everybody being on that savings account or knows where the bucket of cash is and whoever's backyard or whatever the case may be. <laughs> Again, you what have to concept. really trust. Yeah, yeah that's great. You know, what, but you have to really trust people. What a concept. You, you know, to make sure I, it's a good we've group. thought about that um, on numerous occasions, <clears throat> but it would be akin to a savings account. Yeah. But the idea of, of being able to work together for something that's astronomical like that and almost impossible for just one person to become an island and survive on their own with the, with the medical industry the way it is, you know. Well, you stub it, your toe and it hundred thousand dollars right there, you know, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> yeah, you have one person in the group that's uh, financially savvy and is able to invest that money in, in, right. in specific, right. in specific right. areas to where it's gaining interest. I mean, there's a lot of high yield ways to invest. And the one thing I want to add to that before I continue on to our last point is that the one thing about having a a tight-knit community of people that you trust taking it over as opposed to you know another uh, health share program like I mentioned is that you're not having to pay the administrative cost so there's still even though it's a better deal I mean looking at the cost in comparison to the health share compared to the standard health insurance that's out there it, it seems like the cost monthly is a lot better but you still have some of that still has to go into administrative fees, which is understandable because somebody's got to get paid to take care of this stuff. But if you're in a tight knit community and you all agree to help out and, you know, and, and people take on their just like with any kind of community related things, whether it be a garden or whatever, and people take on the area that they're skilled at, you know, investing and so on. Somebody else keeps track of the books or whatever it is, then that's one way you guys can save on that administrative cost. The last idea for health insurance goes back to what did people used to do a hundred years ago <laughs> before they had the government telling them they, you have to have health insurance and then the doctors telling everybody they need to be on one billion different drugs all at once and, and they have to have this surgery that is most likely unneeded or be on drugs for uh, let's say cholesterol or high blood pressure or thyroid, which in most cases is entirely unnecessary. Uh, they're making a lot of money off of you. So what did people used to do? Bloodletting. Uh, oh, shush. Liniment oil. You know that's not what I'm talking about. Well, one thing they used to do is they used to have their emergency fund that was stuffed in a jar or a mattress or somewhere. They, people, it was common for households to have an emergency fund jar. That was for whether it be health related things and they needed the doc to go see the doctor or the doctor came and visited them. That was for if, you know, some other need came up, you know, their house burned down or whatever it is. Of course, that's hopefully they kept the money in place where it wasn't gonna burn. <laughs> but uh, that's what people used to do. And on top of that, back then, doctors weren't putting people on all these expensive drugs they weren't overcharging for uh, procedures that mm. shouldn't cost so much. Hospital stays were, I mean, even in comparison to, you know, what the costs now of things and, and, the, and the devaluation of our dollar, they were still a lot less in comparison to that because you didn't have insurance companies and everybody jumping in the mix trying to take their cut of the pie. So... I say go back to the old-fashioned way, get yourself a fireproof safe or something and start putting some money away, uh, you know, or put it in the bank if you feel better about that where it can earn an interest. I just think that just makes the most sense because that money's still going to be there for you a year or two or five years from now 
if you didn't use it through that whole time, you didn't throw it away, it's still there for you. So that's what they used to do. So what's the thought? It's Why don't you guys uh, let us know what you think about that, or maybe there's some of you out there that actually try this or do this or something like it. Or maybe you um, have some even better ideas you would like to share with us. Right, right, yeah. I was thinking of earlier when, when we were talking about the person who is money savvy and who is going through all of the uh, logistical fine-tuning ends of managing that group account, you know, maybe as a reward for them, maybe they could not have a monthly investment in that. Maybe they can, maybe is, that's the way that they can get paid. Or not you pay know, as much in. I know like on a lot of road share things uh, or associations, you know, there, there are groups of people that live on a remote country road and they all pitch in to, um, you know, buy gravel and and spend time spreading rock and filling in chuck holes and different things and sometimes the the guy that has the you know the backhoe or the tractor or something like that and is giving his time and his equipment uh to the task you know maybe they give him a break or let him let him maintain the road for free and not have to pay into the gravel costs mm -hmm. and you know, putting on lift or something like that for the road or put replacing culverts or something like that. So just some things to think about. Um, you know, we're looking for ideas all the time. And if you guys have some ideas to share with us, uh, those things in the comment section below, uh, we pick up nuggets from you guys, just like we hope you pick up nuggets from us. And uh, anyway, you got anything else to share? No, nope, that's it. Unless you want me on my soapbox again. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching. Take care. And God bless. <laughs>